Good morning, boys and girls. Have you ever wondered how we found out what snowflakes look like? And did you know that no two snowflakes are the same? I think that's really amazing because think of how many snowflakes can fall at a time and they're never exactly like another snowflake. Well, I'm gonna read you a story called Snowflake, Snowflake Bentley. And he is a guy that loved snow. Can you imagine that? He lived in Vermont, which is kind of way up north. Still on the East Coast, but way up north. So it's cold there in the winter, and they have a lot of snow. And he loved snow. This book was written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin, and it was illustrated by Mary Azarian. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a little boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. So that's a long time ago. William Bentley was born February 9th, 1865 on a farm in Jericho, Vermont between Lake Champlain and Mount Mansfield in the heart of the snow belt where the annual snowfall is about 120 inches. That's a lot of snow. Willie Bentley's happiest day, days were snowstorm days he watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. Willie's mother was his teacher until he was 14 years old. She had a set of encyclopedians. encyclopedias. Willie said, I read them all. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops, and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after day, he studied the icy crystals. From his boyhood, from his boyhood on, he studied all forms of moisture. He kept a record of the weather and did many experiments with raindrops. He learned that most crystals had six branches, though a few had three. For each snowflake, the six branches were alike. I found that snowflakes were masterpieces of design, he said. No one design was ever repeated. When a snowflake melted, just that much beauty was gone without leaving any record behind. Their intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he had ever imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same, that were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so that others could see their wonderful design. For three winters, he tried drawing snow crystals, but they always melted before he finished. Starting at age 15, he drew a hundred snow crystals each winter for three winters. So, in order to save the snowflake designs, 
so other people could enjoy them. He was drawing them. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with its own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. Willie's mother knew he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fussing with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and bought him that camera. The camera made images on large glass negatives. Its microscope could magnify a tiny crystal from 64 to 3600 times its actual size. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of 10 cattle. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. Willie's experiment. He used a very small lens opening, which let only a little light reach the negative, but he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. Even so, his first pictures were failures, no better than shadows. He would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. And one day in the second winter, he tried a new experiment and it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. I'm going to read that part over again about the experiment. Because this is the experiment he used. He used a very small lens opening, which let only a little light reach the negative. But he kept the lens open for several seconds, up to a minute and a half. He learned, too, that he could make the snow crystals show up more clearly by using a sharp knife to cut away all the dark parts of the negative around the crystals. This etching meant extra hours of work for each photograph, but Willie didn't mind. When you think about it, he's this is how he's preserving snowflakes. He is why we know what snowflakes look like. In those days, no one cared. Neighbors laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. <clears throat> Willie said the photographs would be his, his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the back door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. Imagine loving snow that much. When he found only jumbled broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held, held it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal, and he didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on a black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast, or the snowflake would evaporate. Before he could slide it into place and take its picture, some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. And some winters he made hundreds. He learned that each snowflake begins as a speck, much too tiny to be seen. Little bits of molecules of water attached to the speck to form the branches. As the crystal grows, the branches come together and trap small quantities of air. Many things affect the way those crystal branches grow. A little more cold, a bit, less, a bit less wind, or a bit more moisture will mean different shaped branches. Willie said that was why in all his pictures, he never found two snowflakes alike. The best snowstorm of his life 
occurred on Valentine's Day in 1928. He made over a hundred photographs during the two-day storm. He called the storm a gift from King Winter. Willie so loved the beauty of nature, he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spider webs jeweled with water drops and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. Willie's nieces and nephews lived on one side of the farmhouse that Willie shared with his brother Charlie. Willie often played the piano as they sang and shared stories and games with him. There he's tying, I don't know if you can see, he's tying a, a grasshopper to a leaf. But his snow crystal pictures were always his favorites. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while, while Willie projected his, sli his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. Many colleges and universities bought lantern slides copies of his photographs and added to their collections each year. Artists and designers used the photographs to inspire their own work. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighborhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as the world's expert on snow, the snowflake man, but he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Willie said there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I will find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 66 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. But still, he was not ready to quit. Even today, those who want to learn about snow crystals begin with Wilson Bentley's book, Snow Crystals. By 1926, he had spent $15,000 on his work and received $4,000 from the sale of photographs and slides. So he had made no money. In fact, he had lost money. Less than a month after turning the first page on his book, Willie walked six miles home in a blizzard to take more pictures. He became ill with pneumonia after that walk, and he died two weeks later. A monument was built for Willie in the center of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbors grew up and told their sons and daughters the story of the man who loved snow. Forty years after Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum to honor the farmer scientist. And his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont, past mountains, over the earth, neighbors and strangers have come to know of the icy wonders that land on their own mitten thanks to Snowflake Bentley. The plaque on the monument says, Snowflake Bentley, Jericho's world famous snowflake authority. For 50 years, Wilson A. Bentley, a simple farmer, developed his technique of microphotography to reveal to the world the grandeur and mystery of the snowflake, its universal hexagonal shape, and its infinite number of lovely designs.
the average farmer gets up at dawn because he has to go to work in the cow yard. I get up at dawn too, but it is because I want to find some leaf hung with dew or a spider web, which the dew has made into the most delicate ropes of pearls. I take my camera with me, get down on my knees in the wet grass and photograph these exquisite bits of nature. Because I do this, I can show these lovely things to people who have never seen them without my, without my help. They will get their daily quarter of milk all right. Other farmers will attend to that. But I think I am giving them something which is just as important. And this is a, an actual photograph of William Bentley and his camera and some of the photographs of snowflakes that he made. I hope you enjoy.